Yesterday, we visited a garden that my mom owns at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. My mom and I live in the city and we often drive for 30 minutes to get to my mom's village in southern Thailand. The land she owns is too small to be called a farm, and we often call it the garden where my mom and I can unleash our botanical skill and hobby. We are not farmers by trade but we have few trees and vegetables that my mom and I had planted, worked hard and cared for for years. And on that day yesterday, we went really early before sunrise to have more time before the sun gets too hot at 10 a.m. in the morning. But as my mom and I turned a corner, we caught a thief red-handed. She the thief was carrying two large bamboo sprouts or bamboo shoots which is the edible part of the bamboo. A bamboo sprout is delicious and it is a staple to many Asian cuisines. And each sprout shoot was at the size of a large newborn baby. My mom was initially in shock because the thief is someone whom she considered a friend and a confidant a young and a pious friend in her mid-twenties who listens to my mom's stories attentively unlike her only son that's me who is often cynical and a know-it-all. I, on the other hand, never liked that person because she seems to have a lot of authority in our affairs. So catching her red-handed felt like the perfect Christmas gift with a big note I told you so. And the best part, she tried running away when she saw me before I blocked her escape. I went ballistic from 0 to 100% explosive in 0.6 seconds, and I immediately accused her of being a thief, a liar and a traitor. And it was the perfect setup because her escape motorbike was behind me and I made a gesture with my arms that she could not maneuver me, or beat me in a physical fight I am 104 kilograms 230 pounds and she was probably 60 70 kilograms 150 pounds in weight, so instead she called my mom for help despite of her absolute betrayal. For years, my mom has been complaining about theft and vandalism on our garden to anyone who would listen, and my mom often got emotional and heartbroken whenever something that she planted and had worked hard and long for it, went missing. This thief friend knew the exact impact of stealing stuff from my mom's garden but still she went for it. She is probably the cause of this recurrent heartache for years, I told my mom and everyone else. We did not have a lot of crops in our garden but we have put a lot of love, time and hard work into it. I had my two-stroke weed whacker grass trimmer engine it's big, noisy and heavy just google it at the back of my Chevy Cruze yesterday. It is about 1.68 meters 5.5 feet long, and it is really heavy. And I had to bring it with me regularly in our 30 minutes journey from the city for years, only to see this garbage of a human being benefiting from our hard labor. And for years. I told everyone, and I was not mincing my words. We only had 6-8 bamboo trees on that land. And the main reason why we did not harvest the sprouts nor the wood ourselves, was because we wanted to have more bamboo trees before we can start harvesting them. So this thief my mom's friend had just destroyed a year of hard work and planning in one single day. So explain yourself, thief, excuse one, I didn't know that you will be here today. And as dumb that excuse was, she kept repeating the same sentence again and again as if it was a valid excuse to begin with. She was not sorry that she was stealing, no no no. She was more sorry that she got caught. In fact, I've never heard her saying I am sorry or it is my fault to my face. She just kept throwing out more excuses to the wall to see which one would stick. Excuse 2. Kakmo my mom's sister who lives next door has given me permission to harvest the sprouts. Unfortunately for the thief, my aunt was at home that day because she decided to delay her next chemotherapy session for a few days. I was so loud at 6 a.m. in the morning that my aunt and few other villagers came out to investigate the ruckus outside. As you can expect, my aunt had zero knowledge what the thief was talking about, so try again. Excuse 3, if I did not harvest them, the sprouts would spoil and go to waste. I swear to God that this is the dumbest thing that I have ever heard coming out from her mouth and she had said some really dumb stuff in the years we've known her. So now she was doing us a favor by stealing our stuff, huh? Chfai, in case you have any doubt. A healthy bamboo sprout shoot does not spoil, it simply grows taller into a bamboo tree. Again, the main reason that we did not harvest the sprouts ourselves, was because we only had few bamboo trees, and we wanted to have few more trees before we start harvesting in amounts that are sustainable. I had to drill this part hard into her tiny brain that bamboo sprouts are not like fruits on a tree that could get spoiled if we did not pick them up on time. Excuse 4. I do not do this always, which is another non-excuse but it was her main defense to the accusations that I was making against her. And it kinda worked because some villagers echoed what she said. That it was an honest one-time mistake. That she probably thought that the bamboo sprouts were free for all, someone said. Here, I have to call out how naive and protective some of the local villagers are. A 14 years old boy was caught stealing a motorbike, 
and they would make an excuse for that theft maybe he mistook the motorbike as his own, and he took it by mistake, and someone was caught for stealing a commemorative watch with the owner's name engraved at the back, and they would say maybe he thought it was his watch and he took it by mistake. And you'd laugh and think that those are extremely lame and unlikely examples, but I tell you here and now that those are real examples of real events that I actually witnessed. In that village, those village people are too kind, too forgiving and too protective of their own, and they are always in the lookout for easy, peaceful and quick resolutions whenever possible. After all, it is not like she had committed murder or had stolen millions of money, she just stole some food a basic human need, someone said on that day. And unfortunately, that excuse 5 I did not know that I was not supposed to do that, I thought that the bamboo sprouts were free for all. Saved her from further scrutiny, supported with a lot of tears in her eyes and plenty of sniffles in her sentences that were barely comprehensible. This had made my blood boil because women can get away with murder in this village with the right amount of sobbing. I mean, such excuses would work if she was 5, 7 or 9 years old, but she was in her mid-twenties and she is not a child unable to see what is right and what is wrong. Again, she never really apologized for stealing in front of my face she just kept cycling between the above excuses for 20 minutes hoping that one or few of them would land well and score points in her favor. At the end, my mom pulled her friend away to sort out the problem among the women folk. The only real comfort I got, was the fact that the whole incident went public real quick hey trust me, in this small community of mostly farmers, news and gossip spread faster than forest fires and COVID-19 itself especially about a neighbor who steals crops from other people's gardens and farms. You cannot and you shouldn't hurt someone physically to satisfy your anger and to exert your own sense of justice on people for obvious moral and legal reasons. But sometimes you can cause far more damage to a person with scandal and disgrace in front of everyone. Believe you me, this is far from over. Story 2, Violent, entitled stalker wants a servant. This is not my story, but comes from a friend and is told with her permission. So, the cast, my friend whom I'll call C. At the time, she was 25F and was as married. The stalker whom I'll call A. He was 21M at the time and single with no prior significant relationship. I would describe C as quite attractive, intelligent, well-educated and athletic. I never met A, but C spoke often about the stalking among our friends. I did see many of the texts and emails and heard many of the voicemails, enough to see that he was very disturbed. I could be described as average looking and out of shape. He did not complete high school nor did he get a GED. He was unemployed and lived with his parents. A was also physically and emotionally abused by his family. C said that those things did not make him undateable, but comes into play during the stalking. C was part of a gaming group that included about 8 to 10 people, both online and in person. She was the only female gamer who participated regularly. There was one other woman who came in frequently. All of the other gamers were single. C's husband disapproved of this group because he thought it was juvenile and a waste of time and that was a source of conflict between them. A few months after C joined, A joined as a friend of another gamer. A was very shy and withdrawn at first, being especially awkward around women. He was very intelligent though, being about to discuss topics and issues that were complex. He also had a reasonable talent for music. C would be the first to admit that she is a sucker for hard luck cases and she made a lot of effort to befriend him and get him to come out of his shell. She advocated for him to obtain his GED and to start to find a job so that he could support himself or help his family. She would often treat him to food and give him suggestions about entertainment. There were times when C would be the center of attention where the guys were vying for her to notice them. Jealousy would occasionally become an issue as two guys would disrupt the gaming because they wanted more of her time. C works as a pilot in a male-dominated field and she can tell and endure racy jokes with the best of them and that was often interpreted as flirty behavior. Now C will also be the first to admit that she can be flirty. It was about that time A began to attach himself to her. A became increasingly demanding of her time and attention. C described it as a black hole, no amount of attention or time was enough. He became increasingly jealous of any interaction that she had with another man. At first, it was huffy, passive-aggressive behavior and comments and disrupting the gaming, but developed into full-on rage. His personality became increasingly fluid, moving from shy and withdrawn to arrogant and overbearing very quickly. He became so disruptive that the gaming group soon fractured into smaller groups with some people quitting outright. C and I have some academic background in psychology and we thought that his behavior was consistent with borderline and narcissistic personality disorder. 
I demanded that C join his group, which she did. C then drove off any other guy and it was only the two of them for a while. He would call or text C at all hours of the night. C indulged him at first she admits this was a huge mistake and that caused conflict with her husband. I used it to try and drive a wedge between C and her husband and A began referring to C as his girlfriend. I then revealed his feelings for C and said some horrifying things. I revealed that it was his lifelong romantic dream to cuck someone. He also had some strange racial fixation that I won't detail here. These were things he was obsessed with the entire time of their friendship and the subsequent stalking period. He also revealed some disturbingly violent fantasies about C that he had. A had a plan for their affair where she would support him financially, emotionally and physically, doing all of the work around the house and helping A's family while he would play some guitar music and write songs. He continually demanded money and other financial support. C knew she was in trouble. She admits that she should have just cut ties at that point, but she felt sorry for A because of his situation and wanted to let him down gently. Whenever she tried to back away A would guilt trip her, talking about his abuse and how he was so alone. He would go into how she owed him since she was well off, well educated and had a good career. She came from a background of privilege and he did not so therefore she was required to make a man out of him. C began to float back to some of the other gaming groups and, when A found out, he threw epic tantrums and sent videos to C. He destroyed his room, punching holes in the walls and trashing everything. He beat his guitar on the ground for around 30 minutes until it was just shards of wood and string and then kept going, all the while screaming, this is you. This is you. This is not me. Of course, he called C every name in the book. His parents and brothers had to subdue him. He would call, text and harass, in person, the other guys in the group. They would tell him that she was married and out of his league, which would enrage him further. He would fill up her voicemail with, fix me. Fix me. Fix me. Fix me. Fix me. Fix me. He would scream at her that she was cucking him if she so much as spoke to another man in his presence and that only he had the right to cuck another man. In the span of an hour-long video, I could present as hypersyrupy, spouting bad love poetry and talking about his future with C, to upset and arrogant, saying he was better and smarter than everyone, to screaming rage, to uncontrollable sobbing, to shy and withdrawn. C would go from most wonderful and beautiful person in the world to spawn of the devil and back in a short time. I would have difficulty believing it if she hadn't have shown me the videos and the thousands upon thousands of texts and emails. She cut ties with him when he was arrested for harassment. But, he got out in a few months and the begging started and how he had changed and was a new man. I, and her best friend Kay, told C she was stupid, but she agreed to talk to him, this time with boundaries. Well, the boundaries went out the window in a week. He began to obsess on his fantasy that C would support him in every way and be physically available to him on call and he would just sit at home and play guitar and write songs. He began to talk about his violent fantasies with her again as well. He spoke about it and wrote about it every time they were in contact. I, and her best friend Kay, told C she was stupid but she tried the I'll be so awful that he'll realize his mistake and run away tactic. She pulled out her supreme BTCH personality but A revealed to her that it was his lifelong dream to be abused by a mean woman and that it turned him on. He also obsessed about the violent fantasies that he had for C and said that he would act on them. She immediately blocked him, but he found ways around that and it became like whack-a-mole. He enlisted mutual friends and others to pressure her into re-establishing contact. When C showed the people what A was doing, 100% of them apologized and backed off, cutting ties with A. The violence and rage re-escalated to the point of where C did have to change her phone and close her social media. The authorities were notified, but all A got was a talking to although he was arrested once for harassment. The stalking went on for more than three years. She has been stalker-free since September 2021, but he does make his presence known from time to time in benign ways. C will be the first to admit she made some huge mistakes and learned from the incident. She is now much more circumspect and a little more reserved and is very careful with how she interacts with men she's unfamiliar with. Story 3, ex-wife tells me I should be taking her on holiday. Format apologies I'm using my phone. So this happened a few years back, I found after 17 or so years 9 of those married that my abusive narcissistic gaslighting manipulative wife had been having an affair. Typical of a narcissist, it was all my fault. So I left her had a bit of a mental breakdown and used the money I was saving for our 10th wedding anniversary, 
and booked a two-week holiday to visit family in Scotland. I informed her of my trip and gave her some details and she looks me in the eye and says you should really be taking me you know I held her stare and responded with ha 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 ha. Edit, it's been about six years and I've punished her by finding myself an absolutely incredible woman that my kids love and adore. I'm marrying her in a horror themed wedding next Halloween. Redditor's reaction story 4 after. Redditor 1. Oh, yeah, sure. Take the woman who emotionally and mentally abused you, throughout your marriage, on your holiday so she can screw everything that's got a pair of testicles. I hope you called her out on being an overpriced prostitute. The ultimate petty revenge would be, sending her picture messages of you having fun with women who look better than her on her best day. Op answer, I did call her a W or and she threw a coffee mug at my head and punched me in the face about four times. I'm just glad my kids didn't see her do that. I've never hit a woman but damn I came close that day. Redditor 2, your response was perfect. Redditor 3, my son came home one day from his and his girlfriend's house and he was bruised, scratched up and his shirt was in pieces because his girlfriend beat the crap out of him because he wouldn't hit her back. She tried telling her parents he hit her and I came close to going to jail because I wanted to beat the ever-loving poop out of her but my son hid my keys. Her parents eventually found out that she lied and told my son he should have defended himself but he would never hit a girl. I so wish he would have but I understand the reason he didn't. She is his ex for a reason. Story 4, entitled Karen ruins her ex's job. So, back in 2016, my mom let's call her C married a man B who was working as a prefect and here I have to make a little clarification. In my country, there's a security force called prefecture and naval quite similar to the army, but with other kinds of duties. That's what I mean as a prefect, because I was still a kid, C took me with her when she moved out to live with B, and we were in peace for a short time, until one of the ex-girlfriends of B I'll name her Karen get into the scene demanding that he give her money that she needed to buy medicine for a disease that she didn't have. After B stops doing that a couple of months before, when my mom found out that and bark at him for giving money to a woman that tries to interfere with the relationship that they have at the beginning, laying to my mom about B having an affair with her behind C's back. That almost broke their relationship. When Karen realized that B won't give her acid, she began to threaten them by message, to call them to yell and insult them and to complain on Facebook about my mom. This of course didn't work, and they continued living like nothing, sometimes even making fun on how crazy that lady was. And then a year a year passed, everything fine, B was about to get a promotion in his job before retiring, when that Karen sent an email to the high command, claiming that B had systematically abused her for years, physically and psychologically, lying in every word, and playing the victim role, and because he was in a force, they took that complaint very seriously, asking for his service gun and opening an investigation against him. All that make impossible his promotion, and because he was about to retire, he couldn't have that opportunity again, not to mention it left a stain on his record. And just to make it clear, my in-law didn't abuse her. Even the people that she called as witnesses d need her words, commenting that the only times they saw situations of violence, it was Karen who insulted and humiliated B. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1, there is so much I wish he could do to Karen for what she did to him. Redditor 2, couldn't he sue for defamation? Op answer, yes, but in the time that all this happened, the economy in the house was very bad because of her. We were in no condition to sue. Redditor 3, if there'd been an investigation, B would have been cleared. Thanks for hanging out and listening. If you like the story, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Make sure to check out our other wild tales right here on the end screen. Catch you in the next story.